Limitations foster creativity. That is the foundation of good game design and a concept that's taken to extremes in the White Castle, which is a funny thing. You may look at the board with its cards and tokens that shift each game, changing what dice can be assigned where and for what outcome, and think of it as a great sandbox of overwhelming delights. And in a way, you'd be right. But with nine actions and nine actions alone over the course of the game, it's up to you to carefully navigate your path forward amidst the shifting landscape to win the favor of the White Castle. Players represent clans, each with diplomats, warriors, and farmers that could be deployed to participate in their own sort of minigame for immediate and endgame rewards. Farmers provide income when placed and at the end of the first two out of three total rounds in the game, whereas warriors give potent immediate rewards and have a sort of multiplier point system, and diplomats climb the tiers of the castle, obtaining new writs which shape your personal actions along with boosting your passive bonuses. But what really makes this puzzle sing is the turn structure and action selection. Dice in three colors are rolled at the beginning of each round and placed upon their unnecessary but admittedly awesome bridges with the highest and lowest roll on either end. During your turn, you remove the right or leftmost dice of a color and place it on an available action space to carry out the action, with the next die of the same color from the middle of the bridge scooting to its place. Simple, right? Well, the catch is, action spaces are assigned numbers, and if you place a dice with a higher number, you get the difference in cash, but lower dice requires you to pay the difference. So what's a Euro gamer to do? Your instinct is to take the higher dice, right? Well, that's sensible and considerable, but White Castle is too clever for that. Taking the lower dice from a bridge activates your lantern, a series of small but formidable bonuses that grow only stronger as your diplomats climb the castle. This central cost and benefit puzzle combined with the agonizing few actions you have to take is what makes the game, and the shared pool of workers in this worker placement doubles down on the consequences of every other player's action, demanding your investment. This sort of high octane pressure comes at a cost though. While the game is surprisingly deft at communicating such a wealth of information, those that really need to see through the matrix and crunch all the numbers on every possible outcome may end up with some excruciatingly analytical turns. Also, the minimalism of nine actions alone will leave those who want complete engines feeling like it's only two thirds of a game, unsatisfied that you didn't get to wring every possible thing thing out of your strategy, but personally, I disagree. I find the fleeting nature fascinating. You have such little time to sculpt something great, and with deft rhythm, you can take the bare asymmetry given at the beginning into something necessarily divergent in focus and playstyle than all other players by the end. Through clarity of vision and enough guile to know just when to pivot, there's an incredible amount of strategy within its diminutive box. Devere has made something that feels special, equal parts comprehensible and challenging with a beautiful production every bit as reserved as its design, with an extremely easy to manage but altogether insidious automated opponent for Solo to boot. As an old school midweight Euro fan, the White Castle feels like a game from another time while also being something entirely and joyously new.